So, um, yeah, so basically I want to talk about some new CSS technology that I'd like to, more designers to incorporate in into their designs, right? Um, my name is Mike Herschel. I'm a senior front end dev. I live in Gainesville, Florida, and I like hammock, dogs, hiking, and fast websites. Uh, this is me and my daughter, Millie, and my dog, Dexter. Dexter is actually my least favorite dog. He's... Um, yeah, he, I have another dog named Coco who I like much better. I work for Lullabot, and Lullabot is a design strategy uh, development company. We have a support and maintenance department now, which is relatively new. So if you're looking for that type of thing, we work with like a whole bunch of like uh, pretty pretty cool clients and large websites and things like that who have logos that you can arrange in grids. And so yeah, so what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about. Um, De graceful degradation, which is uh, you know how things are going to look if if you're if you don't have a modern browser. We're going to talk about things like position sticky, uh, backdrop filter, CSS scroll snap, um, the CSS filter property, uh, repeating linear gradient, CSS shapes, and blend modes. All these are pretty cool. And then there's another one I was going to throw uh, throw in here. Um, that I don't think I'll have time is uh, CSS masking. Um, um, yeah, so uh, this is mainly going to be just be, like, I don't have a heck of a lot of slides. It's a lot of code pen examples, and I'll uh, throw up the links to those code pens if anybody wants to fork them and just kind of throw them. And as I said earlier, if um, I, I, I can't see the chat right now, so if anybody can either unmute themselves or jump in or, or someone do, or if Amy June can do that on their behalf and just stop and ask me questions, I will uh, I will do this. Um, yeah, so so let's talk about progressive enhancement versus graceful degradation. So like basically w progressive enhancement, they're kind of like two sides of the same coin. And um, progressive enhancement is when you start with like the least uh, capable browser that you're supporting and then kind of just add on, add stuff on top. And the, and the opposite of that is graceful degradation where you kind of, you're working with your latest version of Chromium or whatever you're running. And then you, at the end of it, you kind of test, you know, your IE 11 or whatever you're supporting and make sure stuff doesn't completely break. But the, but, but the, but the commonality in this is that even though, um, even though, your your users that have the less capable browsers might see might not see like the cool new feature you know whatever that is whether it's like some cool like blurs or you know some sticky headers or something like that the site doesn't completely break you know and and and, and that's important like it's important for the site to be kind of very robust and and that's I just wanted to kind of throw that out here and then yeah so this is like my second to last slide right before my thank you slide so now we're going to do some demos in here and let's see if I have these up right now. So the first thing right here, I haven't looked at these code pens in a little bit, but the first thing I want to talk about is position sticky right here. So position sticky is something that you actually use uh, fair, fair, like you see fairly often, but you don't know how easy it is now. So position sticky is a new CSS property where if if I were to look in here, like, like it, it just says, position sticky right there and the cool thing is is like when you start scrolling it automatically just kind of puts that down let me make this so it's a little bit narrower here um padding zero twenty percent and you can kind of see how everything kind of just like does a really really cool like it sticks there and then the next one pushes it off and once once again, like this is basically all you need to do right here. You do position sticky and then a top uh, you have to you have to throw a top element in there or a, a top value in there. But so beware, there's there's an issue right here. If you have a um, if if you have a ancestor element that has the overflow property set, to like something other than that's default visible. Like say if you have like overflow hidden on like a wrapper element somewhere up there, it just doesn't work. And so it took me like probably like over an hour to figure that out. 
when I first like ran into that, I'm like, why is not position sticky working? And so, yeah, so I just want to throw this in there. Like uh, position sticky is awesome, but when you're implementing it, if it doesn't work the way you expected, go ahead and check for your overflows. So yeah, um, that's position sticky right there. And I'm gonna, I guess I do, now that I don't have like my slides maximized, I can throw this into the chat here. Sticky, and so if you're not familiar with CodePen, uh, you can click up here, you can log in and you can fork these and you can just like mess around with it and you can just uh, play around. It's pretty, pretty neat, you know? Um, so I wanna kind of move on right here. So yes, yeah, CSS for designers. So let's move into Backdrop Filter. Uh, backdrop Filter, I think, is actually supported by Chrome right now, as you can kind of see right here. Um, so what what this is, uh, previously it was only supported by Safari and Edge, but now it's actually supported by Chrome. So at this point, like it's using up a good, like it's, um, it's, it's supported by a good chunk of the browser market. So like basically, the, like if you look at this, this is one property right here. This is like backdrop filter blur 12 pixels. And you like if you scroll, well, as I scroll down, you can see that, hey, like the little kitten's getting blurry right there. And I could probably, you know, change this a bit, make it 112 pixels and do something like this. And like, this is pretty neat, right? So like, if, if, if you think this is neat, put something in the chat because I can see that right there. And it's not just, um, it's, not, it's not just this blur function that you can do right here. You can also do things like brightness, you know? So like, let's take a look at this. Like you can see, we have this area right here that's pretty, pretty dark, you know? So you can obviously use this if you have like hero images with like some white text on there or something like that, you can make this uh, brightness probably larger. I'm assuming this would work. Yeah, so like, look at this cool stuff in here. I'm just, so I'm just gonna kind of go through here because it's pretty neat right here. So the next thing is contrast. So like, I really like all these like, you know, scroll effects and, and like things as you scroll that like make stuff kind of fun. I don't even know what the drop shadow one does. Um, yeah, so let's, Let's look at, yeah, let's undo the drop shadow. So drop shadow, I don't even know what that's doing, but anyway, but so you can go through here and like the trick is just like, you know, like mess around with it, you know, like uh, grayscale. So you can like make things, um, you, you, you can make things, uh, a little gray or you can not do it or like no we're now we're doing a hue rotate but like you can you, you can make stuff go uh black and white you can invert you know so like let's mess around with the invert you can it'll probably do exactly what you think it does creates negatives all this type of stuff super neat so yay um so yeah individual pen i will throw this in here right here so this is backdrop Drop filter. All right, I see a question. Can you mix filters? And I think that you can by space separating them. Um, let's, like, honestly, um, I'm not quite sure, but let's, you know, back drop filter. When you don't know, you, you Google it. And um, I, I, would, I would assume it would be like, you would space separate it or something in there. Yeah, uh, we can even just test it out right here. Did that work? It didn't look like it worked. It. Wait, no, because I have all this other stuff in here first. We forgot to put it on the actual value too. Yeah, so you can totally uh, mix them, hey? Eh? Like that's something I've never done before, but it works as expected, so yay. Um, all right, that's fun stuff, right? So the next thing I can, uh, we can pull in right here. Um, did I post that link? I think I did, right? 
Yeah, I did. So let's leave this right here. And so um, scroll snap. So I think I have, oh man. So this is one that, oh yeah. So you can see I'm using, I, I have the scroll bar at the bottom. And what's happening is when I let go, it snaps to where I want it to be. Does anybody see that? Now this is like, this is like, there's a little bit of JavaScript in here because I forked this from someone else, but the JavaScript all it does is just like modify the colors and stuff. But if I use, um, this is really cool like on touch devices. So if I use like my trackpad here and I get in here, you know, I can, I can two finger it over and it feels very natural, you know? And it, and it, so you can build things like, um, like CSS only sliders or anything like that. And you're think, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why do I just want to, do, why can't I just use JavaScript? And the answer is because your browser supports this natively, it's going to be a lot faster. It's going to be a lot, a lot more lightweight and it's just going to feel a little bit more fluid, even if you're on, you know, an iPad or iPhone or something like that. And like, that's, that's pretty neat right there. So yeah, so this is it right here. So I'm just gonna post this CSS scroll snap. All right. Um, you can see like right now, let's see what's where it's support. Oh yeah, there's all types of properties in here I wanted to do. So you can control like a lot of the different values, you know, like how quickly it's gonna snap, how far over you need to scroll before it starts. And there's all types of like really, really uh, granular things that you can get into if you do, if, if you've done this. So now um, I want to get into CSS filters, which are pretty cool. So um, one of the things that I really like about CSS filters is adding like a drop shadow. So like there's the regular CSS box shadow property and the box shadow property, like if I were to add like, say like a box shadow on this, bo box shadow, two picks, two picks, two picks, black, you know, it, it, it go ahead, it, it, it adds everything on like the edge. And I tell you what, like Chrome's actually doing a better job than it used to where before, like if you had a border radius, it would actually put the box shadow on the edge too. And now it looks like that behavior's changed. But something that's cool is you, you can do this now with the filter drop shadow and the filter drop shadow will go around your SVG or it'll go around your transparent PNG or like uh, it'll it'll work properly with your border radiuses where your border your border radiuses like even though your the drop shadow might have been working in, in Chrome, I almost guarantee it was it wouldn't work in like, you know, Safari or something like that because Safari is just a pain in the butt. So this is this is just the like CSS filter right here. So in addition to that, like we like we looked at with the backdrop filters, there's a lot of the same ones in here. You can adjust the contrast. You can adjust like the brightness, you know, and, and think about like maybe doing things like this within hover states. You know, you can do this cool stuff in hover states and focus states and things like that. Um, adjust the grayscale, which is, you know, make it black and white, you know, that's kind of a cool, like little look right there. Like imagine doing that, like for your hover and focus states. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of these and then we'll look at the browser support. The CSS filter browser supports is pretty, should be pretty good. I don't think that IE 11 supports it, but, but we'll go ahead and look. Um, it has a sepia tone thing like hey that's pretty neat so like let's go to can i use i'm sure i can i use is an amazing website so filter if i can spell it right filter uh, svgs filter css filter function um this is not exactly correct right here because i know it, it works in like some yeah css filter effects right here so this is like basically this is everything but ie11 right here 
and evidently app or mini. So like you can see it's been supported on Chrome since like version 18 and it's like pretty awesome, yeah. So thank you for that. Um, you can get in here and play with this. I'm gonna post this right here. Filters. So yeah, I'm like a big fan of like doing stuff like uh, making like the website like interactive and like do cool things on scroll and do things on hover as long as it's performant, you know? And when you do stuff within like CSS and you don't use JavaScript, stuff typically is a lot more, a lot faster than otherwise would be, you know, because JavaScript can be just a pain in the butt. Um, so let's kind of move into CSS filters, repeating linear gradient. And let's kind of take a look at this. Yeah, so this is just like basically, this is, you ever see like some of like the cool things where people create like CSS art and stuff like this? This is, uh, this is one of the ways that they do it. So like repeating linear gradient is a function that you throw into your background image right here. And um, you can kind of see like some cool, uh, you know things that it does. I've 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 used like this whole stripe pattern and stuff before on like things like um, admin UIs where I say like you know if you're in Drupal and you go into the layout builder I have like uh, like a cool like a little stripe background to kind of indicate that um, and you can see that the uh, uh, browser supports looks really good even IE ten supports it but it's just like something that we don't ever see like ever see, you know, like, I guess you could kind of do it through background images pretty, pretty easily, but hey, you don't need to because we have repeating linear gradient. Um, repeating gradients in general, let's see what this one is. Oh yeah, so this is a radial gradient right here, a repeating radial gradient. So radial gradients are, re are relatively new. Um, let's go ahead and see what the, what the support is on this. Yeah, uh, actually, no, I thought this was a little bit different. So radial gradients, this might be um, radial gradient. Yeah, so, all right, I, maybe, I, oh, I was thinking of the cone gradients are new. Yeah, the radial gradients are, are, are pretty, uh, are, are old. So, but you can kind of see how the repeating gradients work and like, this is so like some cool effects that you can do and you can add into, you know, designs and things like that. You know, you can kind of imagine how you could use this as like, once again, like maybe like things that happen on click when you, when you go into the active state and things like that. Yeah, thank you for that conic gradient. The, the conic, I wonder if there's like a repeating conic gradient or something like that, but that one is relatively new. So uh, this is pretty cool. Radial gradient. Um, let's kind of move on right here. Oh yeah, so this is my dev site that I was gonna show with the layout builder, but I know that's not working. So CSS shapes are like really, really cool, right? So, hey, look at this. I have this, uh, this image that I have a, um, like you know, uh, a, 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 like a border radius around. But look how the look how this wraps around right here. Like this is pretty neat, you know. Like how the heck am I doing this? And like obviously, like you know, I'm using this thing called CSS shapes right here. So let's kind of look at this right here. Like you can you can see like uh, you can see CSS shapes is somewhere in here. Polygon. Wait, yeah. So circle. I forget what this is. Is this? Where is my code that I'm doing this at right here? Yeah, right here. So you can see shape outside. That's what, that's what I'm using right here. And then uh, if, if I scroll down, well, I had another one in there that, that looked really cool. How come that's not showing? Maybe this web's, maybe this isn't shown right here. It's just, ah, darn it. So I had this like really cool, like, um, uh, like leaf right there. And then what would happen is like, you can actually modify your shape to go around that. So like, let me like say like add like, you know, a leaf. Let's go ahead and create a new leaf in here. And what I'm gonna do is I will show you kind of, kind of what I, what, what we can do on top of that. So let's, um, 
copy link address, and let's see if we can update this. We'll do this on the fly because this is how live demos go. Yeah. She's uh, stuff like that that makes Google horrible. I just want an image of a leaf that's not. No, I just want the leaf. There we go. Sorry, so you can see like right here, there's like, you know, normally this would be tracing around um, and you're you're probably trying to, you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, well, what does that CSS look like? Well, there's like a whole bunch of like this whole polygon function right here with shape outside. And you're thinking to yourself, you know, this is really cool, Mike, but how the heck am I gonna know all this stuff right here? Like, like this is a bunch of BS. And I'm thinking to yourself, you're right, but Poly, uh, Firefox has a CSS shapes editor built into their developer tools. Uh, Firefox has pretty amazing developer tools right here. So let's kind of go in and maybe mess with this right here. Let's move this up. Let's see if this still works. I haven't like messed with this for a while. And uh, where is my, yeah, shape, so you have shape outside right here. So that's attached to the image. Let's go ahead and hit this little button right here and watch this. This is, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, I was gonna say poo your pants here. Like, look at this stuff. Move this back over here. Like, look at that, move this right in here. This can go over like this right here. This is in here. I know I'm seeing like the, oh my gosh, is like, this is awesome. It really is awesome. Like, this is pretty neat. This is like super cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. Someone said rad, but the correct term is awesome because I know that's gonna make Amy Jane upset. <laughs> All right, definitely pooed your pants. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> yeah, Firefox is awesome. So yeah, so uh, you get in here and <laughs> see CSS shapes. Yeah, so I'm all right. I have all my bookmarks in Chrome though. So let's see what see what else we have there, and then we can maybe move on to um, we can move on to uh, CSS blend modes are pretty cool. Am I up to a keg now? I, the tally's way higher than that, JD. Hey, Amy June, how long do I have, by the way? Do I have uh, to the, another 15 minutes or another five minutes? You have another 15 minutes. Cool. All right. Well, this is really good then because we, we can, I wanted to add, um, uh, we have one more to show you, but I wanted to add CSS masking into this, but honestly, uh, with the time change, I thought I would have an hour to do this. And then Amy June pinged me and said, hey, you're up in five minutes. So let's look at um, CSS blend mode. CSS blend modes are pretty cool, right? So it's a, the keyword right here is mixed blend mode. So you have mixed blend mode normal. I'm guessing that's going to do absolutely nothing. But you can do some mixed blend mode um, multiply. And what is that? It puts a little kitten in there. You know, that's because there, so, all right. So what I, wanna, what I want you to see right here is look at the text and look at the cat behind there. Like this is pretty neat stuff right here. Imagine doing this like on hover or on um, uh, like, you know, scroll and uh, like all this type of stuff. Like that's, that's pretty rad, not, not rad, but that's pretty awesome in my opinion. Um, so yeah, um, so 
That's pretty cool. So the mixed blend mode is, 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 is the keyword, but like, of course there's all types of cool things. And these are just basically like the Photoshop filters that you see like right there. So you can see like there's screen, there's things like overlay. And a lot of these, I don't even know exactly what they're going to do until I get in there and mess with them, you know, but like stuff like this is like pretty, pretty cool, you know? There's things like color dodge and just like playing around with all this. Yes, Amy Jude does. Amy June doesn't like awesome. Every time you say awesome, she corrects it to rad for some reason. That is that is correct. That's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Color burn. <laughs> color burn looks pretty cool. So. I'm so I'm going to interrupt here because <laughs> are out. Um, and this is bad camp style. So, um, so the reason awesome is such a ugly word <laughs> is if you look at it, it's some awe, right? I mean, does that really make sense to only have some awe? So that is why I don't like the word. So there you have it, everybody. <laughs> you can continue. Yeah, what about awe full? Yeah, yeah, Mark said this full of awe. All right, so yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna call this stuff awful. So to go and Amy June, Amy June just told me to. So yeah, so there's uh, things like this right here. So yeah, so anyway, so you can see all these options right here. So like you can, you can say all these awful mix blend mode. So you go to the MDN page for mixed blend mode and you can see that the uh, browser supports pretty good. Obviously uh, you wouldn't expect IE and then like there's also like a, a separate thing for uh, SVGs and you can see all their different options right here that, that you have. I think I just like copied and pasted these from here and there and you can see options and what it's gonna look like. And like, yeah, so this stuff is straight up awful. You know, it's full of awe. And like, even as us as uh, front end developers um, might know this stuff exists, but it would be really cool if our designers knew that this existed. Because like for me, I, you know, I, I basically take designs in Figma or in Envision and I convert them and every once in a while I get to do some fun stuff. But I like, I feel like this could be pretty neat. So um, I'm 15 minutes in right now, uh, 15 minutes to the end. So there was one thing I was looking in there is like CSS masking. So I'm going to Google this. And uh, base, so like, let's just kind of take a look at this. You can, so basically you create a mask, right? So you have an SVG and then you can have your image inside of it. And yeah, so you can see it's mask image right here. And honestly, I, oh, I've actually done this as a gradient right here. Um, and I've actually, I can show you that uh, live. We did a website for Ames Laboratory. And if you go in here, you see these images that are up at the top left of this like little promo here. This image, if I were to look at this, if you can see this in DevTools, this image is, is straight up um, like a full like image if, you, if, if I take that off right there. But like from an editorial standpoint, I did not want, I did not want editors to need to edit this thing in Photoshop and then upload it. So I use a combination of, of mask image along with radial gradient and basically just like put that in there like that. So it looks good and functions well and it makes the editor's life a lot easier. So you can use like this mask gradient stuff and like on, or, or mask image on SVGs and on gradients and things like that. And yeah, this is like, this is awful. It's full of awe right here. And I highly recommend that you do this, that you show your designers and uh, yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of about it for me. Like that's, that's ta-da. So I'm a little bit, a little bit quicker.
But does anyone have any questions or anything else that maybe they want to say that, hey, I've, I've thought this is like really, really cool. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe you can, you can teach me something. Can you wear a CSS mask? That would actually be like pretty awesome. Like a CSS mask. Anyway, CSS. I've seen like, I, I, I've seen masks that say like, that they say like 255.255.255.0. So it's a subnet mask, you know, but I haven't seen a CSS mask yet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty rad or off, awful. Uh, any more questions? <laughs> yeah, all right, well, uh, you're welcome. I don't think there's any more questions. So if anyone uses this, you can reach out to me and um, like tell me like, hey Mike, thanks for telling me about CSS masking. This is where I'm using it or anything like that. But all that stuff is like pretty cool. <laughs>